Around the era, the FAW looked to bring in a star manager, Nottingham Forest's mercurial Brian Clough. But when Forest refused to release Clough, the FAW trialled a more familiar face, ex-Wales captain and Swansea City manager Terry Orrath. Even though Yorath had to combine the Wales job with his commitment to the Swans, he went on to become one of the modern era's most successful Wales managers and a firm favourite with the fans. <laughs> I really like Terry Lorreth, I must say, I liked him as a player, you know, another player who wore his heart on his sleeve and, you know, was passionately Welsh and wanted to do as well as he could for the, the national team every time he wore the shirt, really. And I liked the kind of camaraderie he built up in that squad, you know, I mean, it was very different to now, there was much more, let's say, a relaxed approach to how the squad got together and what they did and so on. Really, he just treated you like, like an adult, like a man. You know, if you're going to go out and have a drink, you're going to go out and play, you know, golf or, or horse racing, then you've got to deliver on a Wednesday. In the dressing room before the game, you can have a joke. Uh, because the players know you've been through on the training field. You know, nobody wants to get too uptight. Nobody wants to get um, overplayed, if you like. They had some really good players then, and a, a really good time to watch Wales. It was exciting to watch them then, and you think, wow, look at the players we've got. And you knew that if the ball was, you know, up front, you know that Rush Hughes, so on, there's one of those was going to put it in, no problem at all. He used to play Mark Hughes in, in the middle of the park, he used to play him as a midfielder, because you wanted to get all his best players in the one team, rather than have one of your better players sitting on the bench, not play or not make an impact. He managed to get all his best players in, into that 11, if you like. That, that was pretty much... Um, different to how other managers maybe would have done things. We had journeyman players who were formed into a good system which allowed our star players to flourish. And Terry Ott was responsible for that system. And I just don't think he was given the credit for moulding that bunch into a good national side. Did see young players like Gary Speed revitalise you a little bit? Yeah, I think when you see all these youngsters coming in and all that, uh, they give you an extra spring in, in, your, in your step and everything. And uh, my job really then was uh, to try and pass on my experience to them so they'll do it when they get older as well. People forget how poor the support was for the squad at that time. Very limited sports science and advice and coaching compliment, you know. So Terry Orrath did it against the odds, really, with a very limited backroom team, you know. And I think that was all to do with the spirit that he created in, in that team at that moment. During the 1990s, Wales games moved from Cardiff City's Ninian Park and Wrexham's Racecourse Ground to the National Stadium, the precursor to the Millennium Stadium. It was a key move that helped get past inter-club rivalries in the crowd, but more importantly, it helped boost the FAW's coffers. And very soon, the senior side under Terry Ora would see a return to form. They talk about the house crowd, they talk about the team, they talk about the atmosphere. And you'd be surprised how many rugby people actually come here. And then after they've been here, they tell me, oh, it's a much better atmosphere than the rugby. I think possibly playing at night adds to that. Uh, but uh, I think everybody really enjoys a night at the house crowd. Bringing it to a, a stadium which was not identified with one of the big clubs in Wales had that unifying effect. Suddenly Welsh football was playing in this huge stadium which had a fantastic history because of what happened with rugby and, and suddenly Welsh football was, was part of it. Wins against Belgium and world champions Germany during the Euro 92 qualifiers suggested that Wales were becoming very tough to beat at home. On top of that, there was a historic victory against Brazil in a friendly match in Cardiff. But it was a qualification campaign for the 1994 World Cup that was to be held in the USA that saw some of the most famous and infamous moments of the Terry Olive era. Rush, lovely turns, Rush, can you see this? Here, Rush. Did that campaign feel different to the others? Yeah, I think we had a lot of, uh, obviously, youngsters coming out, say, gigs, you know, all them coming through and all that, you know, Gary Speed and all them, so... And we had a good experience as well. If I'm not mistaken, I think we may have lost the first game. Was it to the five? Yeah, yeah. Five. One. I think we played in the middle of June or something. Yeah. We hadn't we hadn't played three, and we and you're thinking, you know, is it is it going to be tough? But when we played in Cardiff, we felt invincible. We felt we'd beat anyone, 
and we did. You know, we beat the world world champions and all that. But we actually convinced that um, if we could get to the final game against Romania, we'll beat them and we'll qualify for the USA. Here, the arms bar is getting so that you can cut the tension with a knife. In under an hour from now, Wales start their World Cup match with Romania, knowing that a 2-0 win will definitely put them on the plane to America, and that would mean our first World Cup finals for 35 years. It doesn't have ground in uh, Europe big enough for a game like this. It's caught the public imagination, especially since we could well be the sole British representative in America. Out here, the atmosphere is electric. The streets are still thronged with thousands of fans, many of whom have travelled from across Wales. People are still ringing up, hoping that somebody's lost a ticket or whatever. Everybody's desperate to try and go tonight. I've just been offered one for £100. That's five times the face value. It said that 68% of the Welsh public watched the Romania game in November 1993. It's a time that's etched onto the memories of Welsh football fans from that era. Football shirts, outselling rugby shirts, Andy Williams, can't take my eyes off him, echoing around the stands. The players were used to a £200 match fee being promised a million pound bonus package if they qualified for USA 94. chance here. We were getting good support home and away and he felt Rush was you know one last hurrah in it because he was superbly fit. Still is still looks the same. Uh, it's yeah. great. Like the rest and with no moustache. Yeah exactly. Inside again. Opens up for him and it's gone so much riding on it and to be in position of control within the game at the point of the penalty and then to see it all seep away was heartbreaking wasn't it I think for all of us really. Paul Bowden to take it. Well, I think we've been pulled on tons of stick and I'm thinking we can't run with him right? The fellow's got up and took a penalty I didn't see a big key behind him. Crossbar reverberate, you know. Bounces back about 15 yards. Yeah, well, I can just remember the sound as well, yeah. you know, in a packed stadium. I remember watching the game at home, and I remember hearing the oh, before the TV because we were so close to the stadium. You could, back then, you could hear everything from the Arms Park. And yeah, it was just, yeah, he's living with that now, isn't he? It was almost like a kick, just a kick in the stomach, wasn't it? When you're on the pitch, you sense the the kind of direction of the game going in a slightly different way and I'm sure they felt that if that penalty had gone in you know we would have won that game easily. If Paul Bowden scores that penalty our history as a nation has changed because our place in that American World Cup lifts Wales onto our world level and, and gets Wales recognised a lot earlier. They haven't paid it once again they've been beaten at the last gasp Romania victors by two goals to one. The French did not come right. Well, Jerry Yarn, After the disappointing loss to Romania, there was wrangling with the FAW over the renewal of Terry Yarn's contract. On Christmas Eve 1993, the manager who'd taken Wales to the brink of a World Cup finals received a letter informing him that his services were no longer required. An important era in Welsh football 